What's poppin' T-Squad? It's your girl, Keisha, and I'm here with my all T all shade, Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 13, episode 6 review. All right, you guys, so on tonight's episode, me, Cynthia, and Mike sat down to discuss the wedding, and Cynthia decides to tell us that she didn't think that when she sent out the invites that I guess a lot of people were RSVP, um, but we have... 167 people that have already RSVP for this wedding. She was only expecting like a hundred people. Girl, <clears throat> I swear sometimes Cynthia be hooked on phonics. I don't know what in the hell be going on in that brain of hers, child. Um, Mike wants to invite Dennis, Portia's fiance, ex fiance, baby daddy, current boyfriend. We don't know where they stand at this point. Um, to the wedding, Cynthia says that she'll talk to Portia about it because she doesn't really know where they're where they stand right about now. You know, one week they together, one week they not together, one week they on Instagram as a family. The next minute she can't stand them. I don't know where the hell they stand, child. So Cynthia hasn't confirmed whether or not her dad will be attending the wedding because she talk, hasn't talked to her mother about it. Because her mother doesn't get along with her father. She really doesn't care for the man. And after um, her mother did Kenya's PSA on domestic violence, he got mad at Cynthia and has not really spoken to her. And they haven't talked in the last few years. Um, I don't understand why he would get mad at Cynthia. Um, if what she's saying isn't true, then you need to take that up with the mama. But I ain't got nothing to do with that. Like, that's between you and her. And I hate when parents put the child in the midst of their bullshit, their strife or whatever, their animosity towards each other. This ain't got nothing to do with me. This is her truth or her story to tell. I mean, just because she's on a platform that I'm on doesn't mean that it's my fault. Um, but apparently, um, Cynthia and her father have never really been that close. Apparently, um, Cynthia doesn't want her mom to be upset with her for inviting, inviting the daddy. And once again, why put your child in that position? Whatever is going on between you two, you two not getting along has nothing to do with me. My parents don't necessarily get along either, but neither of them have ever put me in the position where, they have said, I don't want your father to be there or I don't want your mom to be there. They know how to coexist and be in the same room as adults to be there for me. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it always should be. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that's ridiculous, especially when I'm grown as hell. Like 50, I mean 50. Cynthia is 50 something fucking years old. Like, mama, you damn near one foot in the grave and so is daddy. Like, if y'all can't coexist at this point, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm going to invite him. If you don't like it, girl, I ain't got nothing to do with that. You ruined my last wedding, girl. You at least need to be able to give me this one. So, um... Mike even says to her, it seems like you're more concerned with how other people feel than what you feel. Like, what do you want? And she was like, I want my dad to be there. And I was like, duh, that's obvious. That's what you want. Like, so do what you, you know, want to, you know, happen. Like, this is your wedding. This is your day. If people can't support you, then they don't need to fucking be there. Point blank and the fucking period. So Drew and Ralph are packing up the house to move. She got on her storm wig. She channeling X-Men. I don't know if she's trying to be the next storm, you know, in the X-Men reboot. But, you know, that's what the wig was giving me. Toy, I mean, not Toya. Drew's hair is just fat. <laughs> like, she's still stuck in, like, 2010 with all of that hair in her head. Like, even with her confessional look tonight, it was something different. It was kind of avant-garde. It was like the mirror look, but the hair, it was just so big and so much of it. It was like, just calm it down, tame it down, girl. But um, Ralph is still grieving the death of his father. They do a balloon release in his honor, and they also kind of like had a mini, like, vow renewal because he apologized to her for all the pain and agony he's caused her and she says that she's determined to stand by him because he's a good father and a good man and this this and that and I'm like I 
don't really care for Drew and Ralph scenes because they seem so contrived. Like she's asking him questions that you can tell the producers ask her to ask him. And it just seems like they're playing a character versus being themselves on camera. If you understand what I mean, like in that kitchen scene, she was like, so babe, how do you feel today? Let's have a contest. And it was just like, this is not a sitcom. Like, what? A, okay. I don't really get it. I'm not really connecting with her and Ralph, but okay. So, Candy is having a grocery giveaway under her Candy Cares Charity Foundation, which is a really dope idea. I really want to start getting into giving away this year. So, I'm really planning on doing a lot of giveaways and things charity um, based because I've been so blessed and I want to extend my blessings on to other people. So, Candy calls Eva's husband, Mike about her child support case with Block. Block owes Riley 92 motherfucking thousand dollars and Riley won her coins because Riley is in school and she want to have her own money and shit. Mama, you have done enough. This nigga got money too. He needs to step it the fuck up. So Candy tells, you know, Mike that she wants to set the money up for Riley in a trust fund. Like it ain't even got to come to me because it's not my money. This is my daughter's money, which I applaud her for. So after she gets off the phone with Mike, some girl that's there that I don't know if she doing hair, makeup or whatever going to say, girl, that judge going to say denied and talking about some, you know, why you want to do something about it now that she's 18 you got money first of all shut your dusty ass up bitch you're here to work not give an opinion i don't know who the fuck you are but she made absolutely no sense with her hating ass i don't give a fuck if i was a billionaire my nigga i didn't lay down and have her by my motherfucking self you need to step the fuck up i don't I, that shit blows me that people think just because you are well off or because you're doing well that that just makes the 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 father none uh nil and void to help that's just like with me and Kyrie's you know I'm doing very well for myself I have provided a way for me and my child but that doesn't mean that his father is exempt from taking care of his fucking son like nigga I didn't nut up in my goddamn self and have him the fuck like I didn't like that shit I don't know who that bird brain bitch was but she needs to go somewhere and have several with her funny looking ass um a candy do what the fuck you gotta do and get your coins for your goddamn daughter fuck that shit fuck that and the fact that this nigga was a millionaire had the money and still didn't do what the fuck he needs to do you most definitely need to get your coins fuck that so anywho me and cynthia meet up with portia and her ginger color wig um for dinner and drinks um cynthia asks her what's going on between her and dennis because mike wants to invite him to the wedding Portia says, you know, I feel like I've been running from the issues involving him cheating and we get interrupted by the fucking um, waitress. And I was like, this bitch just want camera time, girl, because like this drink special is not that goddamn deep. So Portia also says that she's been fussing at him all the time and eating a lot and got back fat and rolls. And I was like, bitch, welcome to my life. <laughs> so she tells us that she's going um, off on him all the time. And now it's getting to the point where she's arguing and fussing with him in front of PJ, which is never healthy. Like once you start that shit arguing and being loud and shit in front of your kids, it's time to fucking separate. Cause that shit is not healthy. You don't want your kids to be traumatized from those experiences because kids remember things, you know what I'm saying? So, and she just can't get over the fact that he, he cheated on her. She says that she's over it, but how can you be over it when you keep on, snap it at him and get mad at him like you're not over it so I don't even know why she keep on saying that she is because it's obvious that she isn't so she says that you know she wants peace inside of her home especially since there's none outside of the home with everything that was going on during the summertime with Black Lives Matter and all the police killings and things of that nature and I was like girl I understand that because ain't nothing more precious than peace in your household like I don't want nobody coming up in my space bringing me down giving me strife getting on my goddamn nerves aggravating me like no my house is my sanctuary and if i can't be at peace in my home where the fuck can i be at peace at so nigga you got to roll um so portia says that she doesn't want dennis at the wedding as of right now like she might change her mind or whatever and i can't remember if did he go to the wedding or not something is making me think that he did end up going to the wedding so cynthia calls noel on the phone to see how she's doing um, Noelle is in Los Angeles. She has her own place. She's a brand influencer now, which is really cool. She has her own YouTube channel and everything. So shout out to Noelle. Um, 
me and Noelle will be the only people that Cynthia shows her wedding dress to. And I was like so excited and elated by that. You know, even after she showed us the dress, I told her that it really wouldn't be my first choice. But, you know, Cynthia hard-headed. She likes to do what she wanted to do. But uh, it was cute for what it was when she showed us to it. But I really wish she would have went with this Vera Wang option that was just oh, ethereal and beautiful. But she went with something, one of them Atlanta-based design that's made for her because she got it for free for free publicity but whatever um so it's the day of <clears throat> candy cares food drive tanya and portia arrived first and portia gave a five thousand dollar donation which was really good you know i gave my donation but i gave it off camera because i don't like doing stuff for clout so kenya arrives next and kenya go say to portia so you're here on time for this because you know she was late for the surprise party Kenya and her confessional are going to say, so Portia arrives in time for her photo op. Now, this is the thing with Kenya and Portia this season. Let me tell you how both of them are playing the game this season. So, Portia came across looking really negative last season with the way that she did Kenya because Kenya and her came into last season with the truth, deciding that they were going to try to bury the hatchet and be friends. Kenya kept her word and Portia didn't. Portia sided with Nene and started playing her to the left and talking crazy about her, and then she turned up on her at the reunion. After she came across looking really crazy to the fans, Portia came into this season with the mindset as I'm going to scale back, I'm not going to come at her, and I'm just going to focus on other, other things, but I'm not going to start with her and I'm not going to talk about her. Kenya, however, still feels some type of way about how Portia did her last season how she went back on her word, how she was talking about her like a dog, and how she did her at the reunion. So she came into this season on one, on ten, and biting and saying little shit and being passive-aggressive towards Portia, which now in turn makes her look like the villain this season because instead of just coming out and saying to Portia, I don't like the way you handled me last season. Me and you came together last season and said we were going to start anew. I was there for you. You know what I'm saying? We were getting along. We were having play dates with our babies and things of that nature. And then you turned on me for Nene. That was fucked up. You know what I'm saying? Just say that instead of all this snide remarks and all this shit because now you're looking like the bad guy. You know what I'm saying? And now Portia's looking like, you know, the one with some goddamn sense, even though she was the one that did you wrong last season. So, like I said last week, I'm just sick of the whole Portia and Kenya beef. Like, I'm just over it. Like, it's so tired and just, ugh, annoying as fuck. So, um, where was I at? Cynthia and Mike go to get their marriage license. I didn't go with them because it was a really hard day for me. Even though I'm over my relationship with Cynthia and Mike, it still made me feel some type of way that to know that, you know, they're getting married and, you know, she will be the one to have his last name, you know. It really is a lot for me. So, you know, I just had to separate myself and distance myself from them that day and just go to Candy's um, fundraiser, solo dolo, you know, and just process my feelings and really deal with, you know, the death of that relationship. So pray that you all just keep me in your prayers at this time, you know, because I'm pretty. Anywho, so uh, Portia tells Tanya what she and Cynthia talked about when they had, you know, dinner and I was off to the side doing my own thing. And Candy says, you know, Mike told Todd that too. He said that he wanted Dennis to come and it won't be a big deal as long as you don't bring a date. That's some bullshit. Like, the fuck if I want to bring a date, I'll bring a date. They ain't got shit to do with you and your wedding. Like, I ain't got nothing to do with, you know, me trying to call this nigga feelings when he cheated on me. The fuck? Niggas in their mindset. Like, shut the fuck up, Mike. So can you say you and Dennis go back so go back so much? It's hard to take you guys seriously. And I'm looking like, even though what you're saying is valid, Kenya, why are you even in why are you even having a conversation with Portia about her nigga when you know y'all not in a good space? Like, what is the point? You just, once again, just nitpicking at her and it's making you look like the bad guy and it's annoying. So, um, Kenya says, only thing that's going to happen is uh, Portia going to be drinking her Hennessy and talking about she want to bust it wide open. And she said, you have to be able to control yourself. You can't expect Cynthia to do it, which is very valid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But once again, it's just like, shut the fuck up. So Portia is annoyed with her. Um, Cynthia arrives. Um, and I'm like, where is 
Latoya, where is Fallon? Where is the other girl, Joy? Where are all these people at? Why they ain't come? So we all sit down after working hard and we eat lunch. And Marlo is now there. She arrived. She gives a five thousand dollar donation. And Candy, her confessional says some people aren't as given as I thought they would be. Put it motherfuckers on blast. And I was like, bitch, I gave you my five thousand dollars, bitch. So I know you ain't talking about me. So I'm wondering, is she talking about Cynthia? Is she talking about Kenya? Is she talking about Latoya? Is she talking about Tanya? Is she talking about drew well drew end up giving a donation so she ain't talking about drew so she got to be talking about latoya fallon the other joy girl uh kenya and cynthia because lord knows if kenya would have gave a goddamn um donation she would have made sure we knew about it and i went on twitter tonight to see if she said oh no the girl she ain't talking about me she didn't say that so i'm guess she's talking about they cheap asses um so and you can almost tell that king uh, candy is kind of a little bit annoyed with kenya this season and you know all of the jabs she keeps on taking and all of that stuff you could tell by the faces she keep on making but you know they're good friends but you can still get on your good friends nerves so um they call drew and drew says that you know she couldn't come because you know they were packing up the house but she did give her donation and candy thanks her they get off the phone with drew and marlo says drew seems so sweet and cynthia says she is and kenya says she always finding a straight talking about cynthia cynthia and kenya are so much alike this jealousy shit with them being friends with other girls like cynthia jealous of kenya being friends with toya Kenya being jealous of Cynthia being friends with Drew. Like, oh my God. Like, just scissor each other already and get it over with. So, Kenya was like, I would like to invite you ladies to a getaway. Um, so, they start discussing where could they go, you know, because of COVID. And Portia suggests they take Fallon's jet since she has her own private jet, you know, because because of COVID, they can't be around other people. And Kenya was like, no, not going to do that. Not going to do that or whatever. So Candy suggests they go to Charleston, North Carolina. You know, that's when shit is about to hit the fan and turn up. So me, Cynthia, and Noel are in the car heading to Cynthia's mama's house to talk to her. And me and Noel are having a photo shoot. Because look at me. Why not? Face on fleek. Yes, God. Hold a beauty. On the eyelids, mm -hmm. Juvia's Place lip liner, Mac Daddy's Artist Couture lip gloss, yes, NYX on the eyebrows, mm -hmm. Forever 21 earrings, Forever 21 necklace, Pretty Little Things crop top, jogging suit, yes, so cute, that's me, y'all like my finger waves. Mm -hmm. but anywho this is not about me this is about cynthia and her family drama so we having our little photo shoot and cynthia gonna talk about so can y'all just be present please and i was like did a hating bitch say something so then we get to a red light her, her ass want to jump in on our photos i'm like yo hating ass so cynthia wants to bring up her dad coming to the wedding with noel being there because she feels like noel gonna have her back and i was like Whoo! you gonna be surprised so we get to barbara's house this is the first time we ever see um cynthia's mama house on television so mal is there and she done ate up all the motherfucking food she ate up all the pork chops all the goddamn sweet potatoes and shit and i was pissed the fuck off because i had ate all day got my mouth all ready for some pork chops and gravy and shit and my old ignorant ass up in her looking like a goddamn ninja that ate everything so cynthia tells them that she wants to invite her daddy and lord here come the floodgates mama say i'll just put my mask over my eyes and I'm like, oh God, mama. So Barbara mad at uh what Cynthia posted on her IG, I guess for Father's Day, saying that she's thankful that her father had her because she feels like I'm the one that had you. I'm the one that took care of you. How dare you thank him? Once again, bitch, you didn't get pregnant on your own. Like, let that girl have whatever relationship she wants to have with her father and stop trying to make her feel guilty because y'all niggas don't get along. Like that has nothing to do with her. I hate when parents do that to their child, make them feel guilty for a woman in a relationship with their father or mother or whatever because they feel some type of way that is y'all shit that has nothing to do with me so um mal then say i still have a relationship with him and mama say anytime y'all want something i'm there um that's what you're supposed to do as a mama you're supposed to be there 
Okay, he wasn't there. That doesn't give you brownie points because you did what you were supposed to do as a parent. You're supposed to. The fuck? So, Mal say, we get that, mom. We get that. So, the mama say, the other thing is, um, I'm mad, Cynthia, about y'all had me on there talking about that man, bringing up stuff from the past. Y'all should have told me that what it was. Uh, I didn't know it was a PSA. I don't even know what a PSA is. Bye, mama. People in Alabama had things to say. Why she lying on Mr. Bailey? He in church. Well, first of all, them people in Alabama can kiss your black ass. Don't give a fuck about that nigga being in church because some of the worst people are in the church every goddamn day of the week. So fuck all that. So um, I'm like, mama, like, really, this shit happened like two, se two or three seasons ago. You knew you were going to be on national fucking television. You knew when they were asking you the questions about domestic violence, what the fuck it was going to be. So don't sit up here and try to guilt trip Cynthia and make it seem like she tricked you into something. Like, stop it. So Cynthia say, I didn't know that when you went to Ken's PSA, you didn't see the cameras and know it was going to be on national television. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me tell you something. I was sitting there looking at sitting like you a goddamn fool because ain't no way in here I would be apologizing to this old ass lady. She knew what the fuck she was doing. So Noelle sides with her grandmama and says, why not put her first this time? Noelle, you need to shut the fuck up. You supposed to be on my goddamn side. Like, I know you love your granny, but shut the hell up, Noelle. Um, so um, Cynthia and her confessional say, I feel guilty that my mom got pregnant with me because she could have been a model. I don't want to disappoint her. And that's sad that she is a 50 some year old woman, you know, going through life wishing and feeling guilty for being born. And that's because of the guilt that her mother puts on her. Like, that's not your fault. Like, that your mother didn't do with her life what she wanted to do. You don't let nothing stop you. You know, I was a teen mom. I didn't let shit stop me. I still went after my goals. Her not succeeding in life has nothing to fucking do with you. So Noelle say, I feel like it's clear what needs to happen. And so she basically looking at her mama like, my granny don't feel like she want that man there. You better not invite her. And so now Cynthia is going to be guilty into, guilty into not inviting her father. Like, y'all people, let me tell y'all something. Y'all can't live for other people. You can't live for your mom. You can't live for your daddy. The only person you can live for is Christ the Lord or whoever you pray to and for yourself. If you go spending your life trying to make other motherfuckers happy, you're going to be a 95-year-old woman or man looking back on your life like, what the fuck did I do? I made everybody else feel comfortable and happy, but here I am looking like Cynthia Mama not happy with my life. Girl, don't do it. Um, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell button. Overall, I give tonight's episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta – a C plus. It was cool. Things are going to pick up once they go on the Charleston trip. That's when things are going to get messy. And I am looking forward to it. Love you guys. See you on the next one. Bye.